Hello, YouTube. In the previous video, I touched upon design analysis, which goes beyond looks. This time, I'll use this pen, the U405, as a case study. The U Pen Company closed down more than a decade ago, and was based in Canton, now better known as Guangzhou. It's a much smaller company and much less well-known internationally, but they made a nice variety of pens, including this. 303. When you look at the 405, it is obviously that it is technically derived from the Parker 51, or more accurately, the 100 Hero by Wolf pens. This style was the mainstream design for many decades. I do not wish to detail the social and political background which led to that. Besides, we are not talking about what's under the hood, no pun intended, but the design and execution of the pen itself. When capped, you can see it's nicely shaped and proportioned, with cap and barrel made out of brushed stainless steel. Compared to some other similar pens like this, Rockman 103, the steel has a warm tint to it, and I quite like that. Notice how the cap and barrel are completely flush, giving it a very sleek look. Just below the edge of the cap is a black band, and upon closer inspection, there's a very slim steel ring above it. As far as I can tell, this is the characteristic unique to this pen. With the cap taken off, you can see a black section with a flush steel ring behind it. The slim steel ring seen when cap turned out to be a part of it as a flange. In order to make the capped pen flush on the outside, there is a need for a section step down. Here the designers make the cap wall extremely thin, helped by the strong material, and that results in a tiny step down that is very desirable. Now let's have a look at the barrel. Being a steel shell, the required screw thread at the end has to be provided by an added bush, and there are several ways to do it. The costliest way is to make a complete plastic barrel, and then bond it to the steel shell. A bush can also be bonded to the inside of the opening, but if the glue fails, the bush might fall into the barrel. Here a flanged bush is used, with the flange showing as a design feature not only adding to its visual interest, but to eliminate the danger caused by the unlikely event of adhesive failure. Here we come to the steel collar at the back of the section. Many pens rely on a slightly wider barrel to prevent the section from being pushed too far into the cap, while some pens, like the Parker 51, have some kind of a mechanical feature to positively locate the section within the cap. And if there is none, putting the cap on without the barrel might cause damages to both the nib and the mechanism inside the cap. So the 405 rely on this flange to give a positive stop when it is capped, with or without the barrel. Thus eliminating the chance of sustaining damage. This flange is a costly part to produce, and the chance of having the section pushed in too far is quite low but the designers decided to implement it anyway. This shows a lot of thought had been put into the design of this pen well beyond its appearance. While I do not plan to make it some sort of a master class in design analysis, I hope you'll be more aware of the design of a pen, or any other product for that matter, when evaluating its inherent merits. It is very illuminating to see a product's Genesis through the eyes of its designers, and it would certainly give you a greater degree of appreciation. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.